by all stations. Attention, all districts, the five alarm fire, five bells, move in immediately. That's it. Let's go, let's go. Firefighters! <laughs> Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a minute, we'll take you to Upper Falls, where Chief Cody and Tim Collins, rookie firemen, both on a holiday from the city fire department, are visiting Tim's cousin, Ellery, who is chief of the Upper Falls Volunteer Fire Brigade. But before we join Tim Collins, here's a message for you. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the farm of Ellery Collins at Upper Falls. There's been great excitement down at the firehouse in the village this evening. And now Ellery is proudly playing host to his guests from the city, cousin Tim Collins and Chief Cody. As the men sit round the table in the kitchen, Chief Cody casts a longing glance at the cookie jar, and Ellery invites him to... Oh, come on, Chief. Help yourself. Don't be bashful. No, no, I know when enough's enough. Oh, those are mighty good cookies, Chief. Well, only two left in the jar. Now, you know, my wife won't like it if there's any left, you know. Well, if you put it that way. That's the idea. <laughs> Come on, Tim. You finish the other one. <laughs> I don't care if I do. Not that I need it. <laughs> Kids will get a kick out of this. Who? My pal Jimmy? Uh -huh. oh, he's in bed long ago, I should hope. And Pete. Uh, Pete's my own boy, Chief. Uh, wait till they wake up tomorrow and find you're here for the weekend. Yeah, I'm afraid I won't be much company for them. I told my deputy it's time the old man took some time off. Well, what do you want to do, Chief? Uh, hike around and see the country? Uh, the boys can tell you anything you want to know about fishing, Chief. Well, you know what I told my deputy? Well, I hope you told him not to call you, no matter what. Yeah, that's right, Chief. It must be years since you took a holiday. Feels like it, boy. Well, I told my deputy, I said, I'm going to put on my old clothes and stretch out under an apple tree and go to sleep. And that's where I'm going to stay, I told him, until time to get back to work. Well, <laughs> that's your program, Chief Cody. We'll see that nobody spoils it for you. Won't we, Tim? Yes, sir. We'll keep the kids off your neck, Chief. You've got two whole days to do nothing but sleep. Yeah. Well, uh, gentlemen, <laughs> I better start practicing. Now, let me, where do I sleep today? All right, this way, Chief. Uh, keep one eye open and follow me. Next morning, Chief Cody starts the day by putting his program into practice. Dressed in his shabbiest old clothes, he wanders off into the meadows after breakfast, picks out a tree, and stretches out. Yes, Chief Cody goes right to work on his holiday program without delay. While in the farmhouse, Tim Collins is hunting for his cousin Ellery, and finds him at the telephone. Ellery? Hey, Ellery, where are you? Uh, right here, Tim. Uh, be right with you. I'm on the phone. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hello, Warden. Uh, this is Chief Collins at Upper Falls. Yeah, still pretty dry in this part of the country, but... Yeah, that's what I want to tell you, Warden. Next time there's trouble in the district, you can count us in. You can count on Upper Falls to tackle any fire in the Midland District. Sure, we've got water. We've got a new tank truck. Carries a thousand gallons of water anywhere we want it to go. You can count on us. Right. Goodbye, Warden. Hey, you're grinning all over like a Cheshire cat. Well, I ought to be, Tim. The district warden, he says it's a gift from the gods. What is your new tank truck? Yep. Funny we never figured that out for ourselves. You need water at a fire and can't get it from the wells because they've run dry. Mm. So you get hold of an oil truck, flush her clean, and there's your water carrier. Yeah, ready to stand by while your engine pumps a stream under the blaze. And she'll do to fill backpacks, too. Yeah, for forest fires. I hadn't thought of that. Well, that's why the district warden was shouting hallelujah just now. He's got the whole Midland district on his hands. All the woods, that is, from Upper Falls to the lakes and far across his little narrow neck. Yeah, as dry as a bone, too, this weather. Yeah. Never a day passes that they don't spot a trace of smoke somewhere in the woods. Hey, say, how, how do the wardens find those fires in time, Ellery? Well, there's men always on watch, Tim. Some on patrol, some in the towers and the high spots. And the district warden, he's all over the place. <laughs> Come fire in the woods, he sits up aloft and giving orders. Uh, he, he does what? Sits up aloft, up in the sky, in one of those helicopters. 
A helicopter? Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, you you fellas are right up to date. Mm, I guess we're not so far behind the times at that. And I suppose the district warden directs his men by two-way radio. Sometimes. Hmm. Other times he just hovers over and hollers at them. Well, I'd like to see that firefighting set up, Ellery. Well, we'll hold up the district warden and get acquainted. Guess we can show you some things about firefighting that you'll never learn in the city. Already, Tim looks forward to meeting the district warden, learning how sharp eyes in the plain overhead scan mile upon mile of dry, tindery forest lands, alert for the telltale plume of smoke that spells danger, devouring flame, devastation. But Tim doesn't suspect how soon he will be plunged headlong into this unfamiliar phase of firefighting. Tim cannot possibly know that miles away, a car from the city is speeding along the highway that cuts across the forest. The driver has not a care in the world. He notes that his cigarette is burned down to a stub, and tosses it from the window of the car, and races on his way, still without a care in the world. But the cigarette has landed in the tangle of dead grass, leaves, dry thorns, and twigs at the side of the road. A light breeze fans the coal. A rim of red fire runs across the tuft of grass, becomes a little flame that snatches at a clump of weeds. The little flame climbs into a low bush, devours the dry branches in one foray and becomes a big flame, leaps the ditch through the foliage of a small evergreen, becomes a blaze roaring through the forest, the dread beginning of a forest fire. Air patrol to headquarters, calling headquarters. Fire in Midland Forest. Fire in Midland. Map reference is H7. Fire at square H7 on your map. Point of origin is near the highway. Looks like a bad one. Heading for Upper Falls. Warn Upper Falls. Alert all volunteers. All wardens report for duty. Issue backpacks and tools to volunteers. At headquarters of the Forest Protection Service, a warden turns to the map, locates the letter H on one edge of the map, and the number 7, draws two quick lines that cross at point H7, the point where fire has been reported. He marks a cross at H7 and takes up the telephone. He twists the crank of the telephone, ringing the emergency call that will summon listeners to join the party line all through the countryside. And miles away, one of the listeners is Ellery Collins, chief of the Upper Falls Volunteer Fire Brigade. Uh, Give me that again. H7 on the fire map. That's on the Woods Road just below Brick Leg Hill. Yeah, yes, I know. With the wind behind it, that fire is coming our way. Well, tell the district warden we'll be there to meet it. We're bringing our new tank truck. We'll be there. Fire in the woods, Tim. Uh, Heading this way, you said. Yep, wind's behind it. And it's uphill all the way through the wildest tangle of woods you ever saw. What's your plan, Ellery? Our best chance is to drive her right up Break Leg Hill. Stop her dead at the top. Yes, sir. Mind if I come along? Mac, the fellow who drove the tank down from the city last night... Uh, He went home, didn't he? Yeah, I can drive that truck, Ellery. Uh, I was hoping you could. Let's get down to the firehouse. My car's out by the barn. As Tim and Cousin Ellery run for the car, the fire alarm down in the village begins to sound. There goes the alarm to the firehouse. That means the engine's about to roll. We'll catch it with the tank truck, though. Come on, jump in. All right, Ellery, what what about Chief Cody? Where about Sissy? Out there in the meadow, under that tree. Uh, Let him sleep. He's got a holiday coming. Uh, Maybe you're right. Every man jack in the whole country would be there, Tim. We don't need to trouble the chief. As Tim Collins and his cousin Ellery speed away from the farm to share in the defense of this quiet countryside against fire in the forest, the noise of their going comes to the ears of Chief Cody. Shabby in his old clothing as any farmhand, he jumps to his feet, locates the source of the noise that has disturbed him. The fire alarm. Down on the firehouse in the village. Collins, Ellery, turn out! All his plans for a holiday forgotten, the chief runs to the barnyard and dashes into the barn. Ellery, what's the matter? You gone deaf? Great blistering blazes, nobody's here. Car's gone, too. Well, how do you like that? They left me, they left me flat on my back, snoring my head off. He charges out again into the meadow from which he can see down the rolling slope to the village of Upper Falls. As he stands staring, he becomes aware of a strange disturbance overhead. Well, what do you know, a helicopter? Hey, it's coming down here. In low, slow flight. The helicopter drops down toward Chief Cody, standing in the meadow. As it comes toward him, he reads the name painted on the fuselage. Forest Service. That's the patrol plane I've heard about. Hey! Hey, Forest Service! I want a lift! Come on down here! Give me a lift! As 
the Forest Service patrol plane drops down toward Chief Cody, he realizes in the flash that here is his chance to get to the scene of the fire, though he has as yet no idea of the nature of the conflagration. Nor does he realize that to the warden in the plane, he looks like an elderly hired hand, not at all like the smartly uniformed Chief Cody, who heads the fire department in the city 20 miles away. For Chief Cody's trip to the fire scene, listen to our next true-to-life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you ought to hear. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is your friend, Chief Cody, with a word of warning. And I hope you'll pass it along because it's important and it's pretty simple, too. Just this. Never trust the fire. I mean, if you make a campfire sometime, or a rubbish fire, or a fire to burn off dry grass, don't take your eyes off of it while it's burning. And when you're through, be sure it's out. Remember, fire is treacherous. In a matter of seconds, it can spread far and wide if you don't watch it with care. So never trust the fire. Well, that's all, and so long for now. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Firefighters. Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.